What it do, why teasy? What's up, y'all? Right now, this story time, right? This story time is about the first fight I got got into. All right, this story time about the first time I got into a fight when I was in prison. Mind you, I was in federal prison for about a year, and they uh, transferred me to um, Virginia. I was in Petersburg, Virginia. So, mind you, I'm fresh out the hole, uh, fresh out of Supermax, so it was a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to do, like get my head cut, stuff like that. Or um, I couldn't use the phone, I couldn't email, none of that, no TV, you know, I couldn't go to the rack, I couldn't hoop. No, so I finally got in general population. So they took me to this new prison in Petersburg. The first day I get there, everybody already knew that I was on my way. That's how I work in the feds. When you en route to a different prison, they send kites, emails, they calling people to let them know like somebody from Baltimore on their way. So I get to the pound and I'm chilling. So the first night, it was like a Monday. It was a Monday, it was the first night. And it was love and hip hop coming on. Mind you, I didn't see love and hip hop for like six months. And prison love and hip hop is everything because it's like, it's everything that's going on in the world. We call it the world, you know, like, cause we here and, and y'all out there. So it's like, we call it the world. So, and of course it got Cardi B, all the chicks on there. So of course us as men gonna watch fucking love and hip hop. And well, I'm like, yeah, I get to watch love and hip hop, catch back up on my shit. So mind you, the day I came, the, it was a dude from Baltimore. Uh, he was leaving that Tuesday. So he like, look, bro, you can have my seat in the TV room. The feds, it's like seating charts, kind of like Baltimore, DC, Philly, everybody got their own seating charts. So at the time the dude gave me a chair. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm the new dude. I got a chair the first day I got there. That's that's rare, so I was like, all right, bet. All right, it's about 7.30 now. You know, Love and Hip Hop come on at 8 o'clock. So I'm like, bet. I get my little, I make me a little hookup, you feel me? I get my sodas. I go down, put my headphones on, because it's like, uh, it's, a, it's like a little room. It's like a little community room, and it's about 10 TVs on the wall. So you got to get your radio and attach it to whatever uh, station on the radio that the TV, so the Love and Hip Hop TV is a certain station. I'm turning my station, sit down in my little new chair. Right. You, I'm chilling. I got my head set on. I'm, I have a care in the world right now. So I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I feel somebody tapping me on my shoulder. So I'm like, I don't really know nobody for them to be, you know, tapping me on my shoulder. So I turn around like this. So it's this little, it's like a little Mexican. He was like, Y'all know I'm six nine, yo. He had to be like five foot four or three or something. Yo, like he was small as shit. S sorry for cursing. He was small as I don't know what. So I'm like, what's up? He like, you in my chair. I'm in your chair. So now me being who I am, I stands up. Like maybe he gotta see me. Maybe he don't know who he talking to. So he said, you're in my seat, this is my seat. So I'm like, yo, you, I, I'm like, bro, this is my seat. For one, this is, a Baltimore, this is a Baltimore chair. So I don't know where you from, you're not sitting in this chair. He said, bro, you just came today. How did you get a chair and you just came today and you got a chair the same day? I've been here for three months waiting for a chair to open and now when I want to open, you get it. No, that ain't how it works. Well, mind you, I have an uncle that was in the uh, facility as well. So he come over like, nephew, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good, uncle. but he tripping. So my uncle kind of like a shot caller uh, in the feds. Like, it wouldn't be like the biggest dude, the craziest dude. It's like the most wise, like the dude that spent the most time in prison, the dude that's a man, you know, like somebody that could lead us the right way. So, and it just so happened to be my uncle. He come over and he talked to the uh, Mexican shot call. I think they was from like uh, California or something. Bunch of tattoos and stuff all over his So face. they go over and have a little talk on the side. So pretty much my uncle come back like, yeah, he feels some type of way about how you, yeah, you know I mean, your demeanor was. So he said he want to see you one on one. I, I instantly started laughing. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. So me, I'm young, dude. I'm, I, I'm with all that. This is what I... At the time of my life, that was what I lived for. That gang banging, like you want to fight, you want to go get knives. Like I was all with so, it. 
about five of us and about four of them, we all walked to the bathroom. We got a couple of dudes watching out for the CEOs and stuff like that. So he uh he come up, he telling me to go into the bathroom. Whenever I fight in prison, I never go in nowhere first. I always let the person go in first. Never ever would you will you get my back ever. So he walks, he, he we sit there arguing about who going in the bathroom first. He walks in first, as soon as he walk in, I bam, strike them. So he get to falling around, grabbing the wall and all that. But in my head, he was doing all that. In my head, I kept saying, how the heck didn't he go to sleep? Listen, y'all. If y'all know me, y'all know when I fight, it's not going to take long. I'm to figure out how this little Mexican take a punch like that. Mind you, he, he been in jail for a while because he was like huge, but he was real short. So after he getting himself together... I'm I'm squared up now. Like I'm like, all right, come on. He straight rushed me. Soon as he rushed me, he grabbed me by my legs. When I say when he grabbed me, it felt like a, it felt like a bear or something grabbing me, man. I was like, yo, man. I say, yo, this Mexican strong as a ox. When I say I, I I couldn't think of doing nothing. I just kept thinking like, man, he ready dropped me on my head right here on this bathroom floor. So me, I'm thinking, and it's crazy because I don't know what made me do it, but I bought, when I bought my fist up, I put like my knuckle out like this and I was hitting him in his, I was hitting him like in his neck. He let that, he let that straight go. He get to doing all that while I'm hitting him in his neck. Now he letting me go. I get to hitting him in his face. He come up like, I don't, he had to jump, yo. It's like he had to jump because he hit me like right here. I'm like, yo, what the? Like he would not go down no matter what I did to him. I was kneeing him all in his ribs, all in his chest. He would not fall. So uh, like probably at about a good 30 seconds worth of fighting, the uh, couple Mexican dudes like, oh, all right, all right, man. It's over, it's over, it's over. He's still running around trying to get to me, get to me and all that. He bleeding and all that. Now my, I didn't, I broke my knuckle. I, I pushed my knuckle back. So it was like my knuckle right here, it was like sitting in the back of my uh, wrist, like to my wrist. That was like the worst pain, but I couldn't feel it at the time. So it was just like a whole lot of, lot of nothing for love and hip hop. And then in all that, <clears throat> my adrenaline was rushing so bad and all that afterwards, I couldn't even enjoy love and hip hop. I ended up just taking my tail in my, in my cell and went to sleep, yo. But yeah, yo, that was... uh. That was a quick little story time. Yo. I just wanted to get y'all that was on my mind, but till next time. Whew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't touch my phone, don't call my phone. Yeah, don't FaceTime me.